Hey, it's Mr. Hayes. I'm back. Sorry, I had some tech issues, so hence the delay in some of these videos coming out. So let's just jump back in with this. So pop quiz. Um, goal here was you come into class and I tell you, hey, you got to take a quiz. Everybody panics. I either give you a Scantron sheet or I just have you write it on a sheet of paper and I say five questions. The answers are A through D. Give me your answers. And everybody's like, what? And you're like, oh, I don't have any questions. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what the questions are. You just have to guess. And then I go through, I give you the answers, you write down the number correct. That's to kind of give you an idea of something kind of almost being totally random. Okay. And so then we talk through, is the number of successes, uh, correct guesses, binomial? And the answer is yes, because obviously you've got either right or wrong. You either got it you know, correct or it's wrong. Um, independent, each answer doesn't affect the other because you don't know what the questions are. Um, number five, probability one out of four is two. So it is a binomial setting. Now in terms of the setup here, what you're going to end up doing is remember P um, of X equals to 2 is that you're going to have 5 choose 2. And then since the 2 is the successes, I've got 0.25 raised uh, squared and then 0.75 to 3. Remember this, what this is doing is this counting how many different ways there are to pick 2 out of 5. And it doesn't matter if, let's say, if you're picking the first and set, if you got the first and second question right, technically which order you're doing it in, et cetera. So I get 0.264. Now, the shortcut on this is that your calculator does have an option underneath the distribution menu. It's binomial PDF. Fastest way to get it is to either type the letter A, at least on the T84s, or you can also usually sometimes go up and kind of go around the back of it and find it on the menu that way. N is the number of trials, P is your probability, X is the number of successes. So notice here, and again, remember you have to write both, if you're going to use calculator language on the AP test, you have to have both of these down. You can't just write this. So we've got this, and I get 0.264. You go through and you're going to calculate out the rest of these. And this is the probabilities of getting 0 correct, 1 correct, 2 correct, 3 correct, 4 correct, and 5 correct. So from there, we've got a series of questions. And so obviously here, the most that people are going to get, and since it's 0.25, since you're getting, you know, 0.25 right, the nice part about this is that we, on purpose, they didn't make it four, because if it was four, you'd see a lot of the ones. But since we have five, it's going to be like, well, it's going to maybe bleed in a little bit over here. And so exactly what's going on. So as you go through here, it says, and find and interpret the mean of the distribution and show your work. So for the mean of the distribution, remember, it is your expected value. So it's the sum of your values times the corresponding probabilities. So 0 times 0.237, 1 times 3.96, plus 2 times 2.264, blah, 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 blah. And you get 1.25. And again, so there's the formula for that. Oh, there's the shortcut formula. We're going to talk about that in a second. After many quizzes, the average score going on the quiz is 1.25 out of 5. So you interpret it all nicely. Now the shortcut turns out to be this. If you know that your probability is P and you have N items, the mean is going to just be the product of that. So in this case here, I have five items. I'm going to multiply by 1.25. So it turns out that you're going to average out 1.25 correct questions. Um, and the reasoning we don't necessarily go super into. We just kind of wanted to make sure you see it here first. Um, and then in terms of the standard deviation, Again, you can type it all in. However, one of the ways that you can do it quicker is this. So the standard deviation turns out to be, you can do it all by hand. So you're going to find the distance between x and your average of 1.2, square it, multiply it by the probability, add them all up, take the square root, boom, Bob's your uncle. The shortcut here is the standard deviation of x is the square root of n times p times not p. And so actually one of my students had asked about this um, for, for a numeric example of this. So like in this case here, what we end up doing is standard deviation for x is 5 times 0.25 times 0.75. Okay. And so again, so whatever p is, this is the chance. So it's basically the two probabilities we used back here. Whoa, that's sideways. Sorry. Back up here. Um, let's see, where do we leave off? Right there. Okay, so now the question then becomes this. What's the probability of getting at most three correct? So what we would normally do is we would add all those up. So you'd say, okay, the probability of getting at most three correct is P of 0 plus P of 1 plus P of 2 and P of 3. 
You could also say, well, I could go 1 minus P of 4 and P of 5, which would also be true because that'd be, what, 1 minus 16 thousandths. So the difference here is just basically rounding error up here, so we're close. Much like what we did with normal distributions, there is a, sh in the binomial distributions, which we talked about up here, this is PDF, this talks about just for x equals 2. There is a binomial CDF for cumulative. And so the probability of doing x is less than or equal to 3. Again, binomial CDF, same setup, number of items, your probability, number of items that, a number of successes that you're looking for. And then that would be the typo. Now notice you get the same answer. Hey, less adding to do. Now, the one thing which you do have to remember, however, is that it always adds it up from the left. So it's going to start from the cumulative from the left, and it's going to go from here. So if I was asking you for like this next question, what's the probability of getting three or more correct? If this is where three, is, actually, let's go up here. <clears throat> so if this is where three is, the cumulative is only going to add up here from the left-hand side. So if I want three or more, I either have to figure these out and add them up, or I need to say, figure out one through two, and then take that away from my 100%. Okay, so down here, notice what we ended up doing was that for P is greater than or equal to 3, again, I can either go and I can do 0 0.088, 0 0.015, 0 0.001, and add all those up and get 10.4. Or I can go 1 minus the cumulative binomial distribution up to 2. Now remember, this has to be less than here because 3 is included in this one. So that means you go up to the prior one. Okay, so you may have already seen the formalized stuff. I did that first because we did this one in class. But anyway, check that out if you're not in my class, and we will see you soon. Bye.